Okay, good morning everyone. Yesterday, if I can reach around here and grab what I'm doing, I went with the Urban Sketchers to Harvard's Museum of Natural History, which has one dead thing after another. So my plan was, this was to, in this case, not bring my entire artist studio with me, but I knew there were going to be a lot of bones there, and I brought a few pens. These two were the only ones I used. And this one, as I was uncapping it, the barrel broke in two. Um, and normally they don't break in two, but this one did. And um, it's a later Waterman, and their plastics they used were quite brittle. And I should have known better, but it was a very tight fitting cap, and I pulled like this and only the back part came off. But at the gift shop at the museum, the nice lady, Lindsay was her name, I calligraphed it beautifully for her, she supplied me with a piece of tape. So I was able eventually to use this pen. And I'll show you what I was doing with it. Bef while Before I went to the gift shop to get the tape, though, I moved over to this pen, um, which almost does the same thing, except it's more flexible, actually. So I, I had two pens, two tools in my little arsenal. This Schaefer from 1940-something or other and this water pen from 19, 2000, whatever, and whatever. It's just a thing with a little uh, brush. It would be helpful if you could see what I was showing you, wouldn't it? Um, and this is filled with water, and because the ink I'm using is water-based ink, by applying water, the ink will smear, and I'll have an ink wash. And if the ink was freshly laid down, it would be even wetter and more easily washable. So there's, I would draw, and then I would smush this around, and I would get this ink wash. So I was continually moving from one pen to the other, and because, as you can see at the Museum of Natural History, uh, evolution was how we got two arms rather than three. If we had three arms, we would be intelligently designed, but we have only two. And th this, this is in your way, isn't it? Let me move it out of the way. There we go. Um, so that I had to use my mouth to hold the pens. I would go from one to the other, and the cap, I would pull the cap off with my mouth and draw. And then, so I was sort of holding both pens in one hand and drawing with the other. And, so I'll just show you some of the drawings I did. So this one is, oh, and I'm using paper. It's this shimmery, you can see the reflective quality of this paper. Uh, shimmery paper I, I get here in Boston that um, the ink sort of sits on top of it. It doesn't seep in like normal paper. So it's uh, a very interesting um, surface to work on. But there was other paper I had that where the ink did was did seep in a little bit more and I had a different of I mean it looks more or less the same, but this was really quite interesting how this worked. I'd like to get more of this paper if I can. 
So among the things that, I, well, here's sort of a standard drawing of a thing with four legs, a quadruped with a beautiful tail, beautiful calligraphic tail. So I would draw it very loosey-goosey and then I would throw some of the water down and get some ink washy stuff going on. And then I would go back with pen and then keep continually switching back and forth. And I was fascinated by the shadows, not only the shadows on the object, but the shadows cast on the on the surface of the uh, showcase. So here, you know, there's some sort of monkey, some sort of primate here. There's the spike holding him up. I'm sort of looking down on him. Here's his left leg, his left arm, going way over here, and then the the cast shadow of the arm and the body is seen here. And there were multiple lights, so you see multiple shadows. Uh, here's a different primate holding a branch, so you see his little fingers there and his little hand, his opposable thumb, and then the shadows cast there. So these are really, really fun to do. Here's another of that sort of mystery paper. Just a very delicate... I, w I wanted to use this these very fine nibs with very very s slight flexibility in their nib to to work on these. Um, I also when I go to these places, these museums, I do like to show that this is not just a skeleton walking around. It's a skeleton or a stuffed animal in a museum. And in this case, the primate display was underneath the stairwell. And it was really quite interesting, you know, having this skull and these arms sort of lurking under the stairs. Um, kneecaps were drawn. Not very well in this case, but they were drawn. Um, I also had fun drawing creepy things in jars. Um, I don't know what this is. Some sort of... What are those things that lobsters belong to? Yep, arthropod thing. Here's a crab. There's an albino. I don't know if it was supposed to be albino or the solution just turned it white, but it was beautiful white uh, underside of a crab. Here's a different crab uh, seen on its dorsal side, rectal, dorsal, whatever the top is. Um, and I love how the, the water you see, you know, through the top and through the side of the glass and the reflections of the glass. It's really quite, quite lovely uh, way to look at something because um, it's distorted and sort of fun in that way. Oh, I don't know what this was. Were these, these are, this is part of the pelvis. These are the hind legs of some creature. Maybe this creature. Recognize what that is. Here's part of a tail pelvis. This was uh, the elbow of a bird. Um, it's connected to the body back here. To whatever, the shoulder, I guess elbow and this turns into the wing. Some little claw stuff. This is one of my favorite drawings that I did. I was looking straight down. Oops, oops, oops. it's upside down pier. I was looking straight down on a display that was almost at ground level and I'm at me level looking down and it was just the beautiful tail here and the shadow of the tail and the body and the legs. 
And here again is with this um, this paper. And what was different about it, I think this stayed wet longer. Maybe it didn't seep in at all. It was just I'll show you in one second when I finish showing you the drawings I did. I'll do examples. Another, I think another little primate creature. And here are these little striped bits. That was the the shadows of the rib cage hitting that part of the bone. And here's another, here's a zoomed out version of that wing. I, I, this is the close up and this is the rest of it. So here's the body, the arm, the other arm, and the other arm. So I guess it's facing this way. So the head is over here somewhere. Here's the shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers, and three toes. So let's play with these pens. So here's one kind of paper, and here's no. Just use the back because I don't know if I have any of that. So again, what I did was I used this pen to draw. I'm going to draw this little clip right here. Okay, are you going to stay still or what? My drawing board is at an angle, as drawing boards are, and consequently gravity has the ability to shove things around. Oh, I never know which way I'm going to have my... I tend to draw longitudinally, longitudinal um, hatch, hatchings representing, you know, I can draw a cylinder like this, showing the shadow, or I can draw the cil a cylinder like this, with those kind of hatchings. And it's easier for me to draw straight lines than curved ones. So I'm lazy that way. So anyway, I draw this thing and then I would go in with the, this, this thing, get some water at it. Then I would add some of this to sort of smush it around. So what I did was I mean, one of the things I, I wanted to do was make sure that the there was highlight highlights where the bones appeared white against a darker background. So if I was drawing a bone, I would sometimes draw the shadow on the bone here, but I would want the white of the bone to be the highlight. So I would smoosh this, I would pull that out. And then I would pull this out this way. So you would sort of see the white of the bone as being, is this even in focus? The white of the bone sort of popping out at you. Okay, let's try it on this paper. Between me and the paper now is the phone, which is on a tripod with this power cord and this other stuff. So I'm sort of... So this, you're going to see that this is going to st stay wet a lot longer than this did. So what does that mean? It means that the paper is less absorbent, I guess. So, one of my fellow artists at this thing saw all of the drawings I did, and she said, 
Are those all your drawings? Did you all do all of those today? Yeah, I did. I got I got here an hour early, but I did do all of them today. You must draw fast. Yes, I do draw fast. I do not. I don't have time to draw slow. Um, and the pens I have can make a line like that and do, don't skip. So I draw I draw quickly. And what's nice about I'm using I'm using a pen from 1940, and I'm using ink from 1940. I have a bunch of old Carter, Parker, Schaefer, and Waterman ink in quart bottles that have faded. This might have been blue at one time, or blue black. That was a color that people seemed to like, and so it's turned. It's faded to be sort of a grayish blue. And again, it was perfectly fine for the purpose I had in mind. And um, I sell quart bottles of ink at the pen shows where I don't have to pack them up and have you pay for shipping. But if you really want a quart bottle of gray ink, faded ink, let me know. I'll <laughs> sell it to you. But what I like about that ink is I'm forever testing pens and trying them out and calligraphing names and seeing if the pen works and you know rather than using an 11 or 12 bottle of this every time I do it I use these gallons of faded ink so anyway this pen even though it's broken is still working fine I, I hope I have another barrel in my parts box to put this in. If I don't, I can take this nib out and put it in something that I like. I sort of was buying it for the nib anyway um, at, at the recent pen show. I, um, I, I've rediscovered the joy of writing with a pen that's very, very fine and almost not flexible. I really like that very, uh, if, if, if this is a scale of 0 to 10, where 10 is the most flexible, yes, it's nice having a pen that does that, the entire range. Uh, but it's better, better not having an entire range, it's better having a little tiny bit of res uh, limits on your uh, creativity, shall we say. Um, and the you know the range can be small, but it can be anywhere along this continuum. I have pens that'll do this or this, you know, very slight range. And some of them are pretty much a point on this line. They don't do anything. Those are the least interesting to me. But this one here fits sort of in this realm. It starts at almost nothing and goes to a little bit more than nothing. Uh, this one here goes a little, starts a, a little bit broader and goes a little bit broader. But you can flip it over and it's pretty fine. So this one almost did, did what the one that I broke did. So, but each each pen is going to have a different feel to it. Okay, stay. Good. Yes. Anyway, this was really a a nice a nice way to go about it. Was to normally I bring pens and pencils, and I bring my iPad, and I bring all sorts of stuff to these meetups and I end up spending more time selecting the tool I'm going to use than actually drawing. So a note to self, I would like to bring next time, you know, maybe two, like I did this time. I brought two things. I brought my iPad and I brought pens and paper. 
and I left the colored pencils at home, I left the um, lumber crayon at home, I left my black paper at home, I just bought two different kinds of paper, and I was much happier with this limit. I can always go back later and draw again with something else if I want to. This pen that I showed the other day has a really neat feed on it. Let's see if I can... The nib I discovered is cracked, but I, I will take it out. It's on borrowed time, this nib. I'll show you where it's cracked as well. I'll draw a picture of it where it's cracked. So here's the nib looking down on the nib and there's a crack that goes like that which means that its integrity is in flux. Um, it, it rises up from the... it's almost underneath the section but it's it tends to rise up from the section from the feed rather and um, so it start, starts to skip but I want to show you this the feed now, this is a pen I've never ever ever seen before I never knew it existed and here's the the ink channel I don't know if you can see Let me get in focus the ink channel goes down the middle like it's supposed to, but then it goes to the side. It twists like this and it's on the side. Now my th thought is that it does that so that in its advertising it would say every drop from your pen is used because the I'll just put it all back together again and sort of explain to you. But I've never seen that. I've in in the the closest thing that I know that Americans did. This is a British pen, I think. Was the Lucky Curve feed. But uh where's my ink? Where's my watered down ink? Carter Blue in a Parker bottle. But as you as the pen is tilted like this, here's the section or the threads, and here's the nib down here. The feed goes back here like this. And if this is the entrance to your ink and the ink level is to here, it's never going to get there. But if the feed entrance is here, you have that much more ink available. Now if they can put it on the bottom, then they'd have the most. But maybe having the bottom twist around like this to the top was too much to ask. So that was a, sort of a cool thing. And again, you see, well, you can't see, but that the nib is coming up from the feed. So the nib is on borrowed time. I'll put a different nib in it when this one goes away. Um, but so that's what I did uh, yesterday with the Urban Sketchers. Urban Sketchers. My scribbles that I do when I'm testing pens. I can't talk and write at the same time, write words, because then one of one of my, my either my mouth or my hand will win. Um, 
Some people have the ability to do both, but I don't. So I scribble when I'm talking. And um, someone that saw this, these scribbles uh, shown on someone else's YouTube page, he or she said, I'm sorry, but Mr. Gustafson's scribbles make me lose the will to live. Well, I'm sorry about that, sir or madam. But that's what I do. I scribble beautifully, by the way. I scribble beautifully. So today, if I have time, I'm going to try to come up with a selection of pens that I can put on uh, in a couple of emails to, to sell to people. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make a video showing how a certain number of pens write and um, you know, post the video on YouTube and if people want to watch it and buy something from me, they can. Um, or I may just take a picture of what I did and the range that they have and what the pen looks like. That might be easier. Because I don't want to frustrate you, the watcher, when I have a bunch of pens that are for sale and then you look at the video three years from now and you want to buy a pen that I sold two years ago. So I'd rather just maybe do it a different way. Look how nice this is. This is just lovely. These pens. Okay, bye.